Welcome to the Go Big Redcast with Dave, Honky, Homer, and Redcast Rob. Welcome to the Go Big Redcast. I'm your host, David Gaspers, and I'm with Honky. Please, no more Randy Gregory lighting it up on Denver jokes, people. Uh, it's been eight hours. I can't take any more. <laughs> I'm also with Redcast Rob. Well, I'd like to officially announce that after my retirement from podcasting last week, I've spent the entire week with my wife and kids and decided I'm back. Good. Good all right. You. All right. And also with Boomer. Well, we're here to announce uh, my picks for the Final Four this year. Uh, I've got Brisbane, Melbourne, Port Adelaide, and the Western Bulldogs. And Wait, we're not talking AFL? <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? Son of a... <laughs> Carlton, man. I mean, come on. Um, all right. Uh, well, Hunk, uh, we got an exciting show for us uh, tonight. You want to give us a rundown? Yeah. Well, first, just a uh, preview for next week. Uh, remember, mark your calendars. Wednesday, 23rd at 8.30, we're going to have Tyler Kai, the Associate Athletic Director for Leadership Gifts and Capital Projects on. And then uh, Rob, uh, of course, as usual, our promo code. You're on mute, Rob. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Promo code REDCAST. Go to hillmarcy.com <laughs> slash subscribe. We're smooth. All right. We are smooth. I muted myself. All righty. So that, without further ado, everyone, <laughs> without further ado, our special guest Today, we have a smooth conversation with a cool cat from the Lincoln Journal Star. So find a mixologist to pour you something full of chemistry, because it's time to take a hip sip with Stephen Sipple. So, fellas, uh, we have another C-Towner Columbus guy joining us tonight. Uh, Dave, he's a fellow Columbus High alum, Discover with you. And uh, Redcasters, you all know him from his many years covering Husker sports with the Lincoln Journal Star, his many appearances on Big Red Wrap Up, and his morning show with uh, Early Break and Sip of Jake on 93.7 The Ticket. We welcome back to the Redcast again, Stephen M. Sipple. How you doing, Sip? Hi. Uh, I, well, I'm doing fine. It's great to be with you guys. I'm really interested in your thoughts tonight. Uh, yeah. I'm always interested in doing these things. Um, well, so... Uh, I'll just be interested to hear what's on your minds. <laughs> well, uh, we're also interested in knowing what's on everyone else's mind, too. So Redcasters that are tuning in through Twitter and Facebook and YouTube right now, uh, make sure, you know, send us in your questions, your comments. Boomer's going to be going through those. And, uh, you know, we'll try to get some of those questions asked. And, uh, you know, we can we can kind of go from there. But let's start <laughs> off with what we do each week right now, guys, and that's Tweets of the Week. And <laughs> Sip, yes. we've got three of yours here. And they, they kind of – they go across all of the uh, the gambit here. It's it's football, it's basketball, and it's baseball going on right now. Um, we had a football one with you here, uh, quarterback seven. Yeah, this is on March thirteenth. Uh, no shortage of intriguing topics in Nebraska spring camp. Very interesting period in a proud program's history. Enjoy, and it was an article that you had on on uh, some of Thompson's reasons for choosing the Huskers. And we're going to talk a little bit about NIL and quarterbacks. And then a little bit later here, we'll talk some basketball. And you had a, a tweet on on Hoiberg and, and you've been a little critical at them times. It'll be interesting to kind of get your, your take on that. And then also baseball is going on and, and we just won yesterday and it looks like we're going to win again tonight. So maybe we're going to start to get on a, on a winning streak here, but a uh, combination of the three, let's start with the football side and let's start with, uh, let's start with, I think you had a really good conversation that was on the sip and Sam podcast. And we were talking about at that time, kind of NIL and, and how recruiting and how things have changed. And you had a great well, quote. You, you said in this, in this world now, we're basically handing guys jobs. And it was talking about not in a negative way. It was just that we're talking about, we're bringing in guys now and Thompson is the quarterback. And I don't know if it's the competition or not, but, but NIL is playing a role in that he's the new quarterback. He's, he's pretty much looks like he's the starter. So did we hand that job to Casey? Is he clearly the best QB? I, I want to kind of get your thoughts on, on that, let's start with that as we're in the spring ball. Yeah, it's it's really interesting. I mean, I, it's hard to frame it up, except I would just say this. 
it definitely has the feel that he's the number one. They've uh, they've sort of, I mean, he's taken one reps. We're just in this sort of different world now, right? Um, mm-hmm. He is the most experienced guy um, in the quarterback room. He also the, happens to be the most charismatic guy. He also happens to be the only guy who's making six figures in NIL money. He's the best uh, paid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the most highly paid, right? But there's the deal. I mean, I know I, I and I always got to be careful. You guys are younger guys and I and I got to um I, I don't like to feel old all the time. I've all I come from a, you know, I covered the team in the hell late 80s. Um and it wasn't it wasn't like this. You know, you kind of had to win the job, right? Mm-hmm. Um and I now but but I would say this, if K, let's say Casey Thompson in the event he had five straight bad practices. Okay? It, it, that wouldn't necessarily be his job at that point. They'd start, you know, Logan Smothers could assert himself in that situation. Heinrich Harburg might be able to assert himself in that situation or, or when Chubba Purdy is healthy, which I think he'll be back. He'll be back um, kind of full go on March 22nd when they get back from spring break. So in that sense, he hasn't been given the job, but, you know, he's, it's probably his to lose is what what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. Well, we're a little old school here too. We had our own tweet and last week we did a poll and it was asking about should the uh, Husker quarterbacks, you know, should they have the green jersey on or off? And shockingly that, that created a decent amount of feedback from some people. And from my perspective, you know, I'm, I'm the old school guy. I'm like, you, you, you don't have a green jersey on your, if you're competing for that spot, you know, you're going to all, all uh, be wearing it until you at least get a winner. Now, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm po- positive with Thompson. I mean, I'm sure he's the starter. And again, I have no problem with that. But I do think that, especially at that backup spot, I mean, th- there needs to be a competition. Like we're always one play away from who that next guy's up. Right. I want. I don't know what they'll do with the green jersey. Um, you saw when Casey was at the podium on Wednesday, he had his green jersey on. Mm. Um, it, it seems like we've just trended toward a world in college football where it's just more, they just don't get hit very much, you know? Um, Are we aware of any other college football program that still, you know, has full contact practices with their quarterbacks getting hit? No, my David, my scope's really limited. It, I've covered one program for 30 plus years. So it's going to Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's, I mean, I do tell the other guys sometimes, you know, we get so locked in on Nebraska, we get sort of myopic. We know all their strengths, all their weaknesses. We know all about the way they go about things. Um, but it would be nice to go around and see in this mm-hmm. world how, how other guy how other programs do it. But we don't really have that opportunity. Yeah, I, I've I read up. Where, I don't know who's hitting a lot and who's not. Yeah, and the thing is, you're hitting when you need to hit and not not just to hit, right? I mean, there's a point if you have a starting quarterback that's – clear as day and this is this game came back to the competition part if it's if the competition's over for the starting spot then i i wouldn't keep hitting the starter if the competition's going on for number two and three that's where you, you get some hits especially when guys are young you gotta you gotta prove it somewhere i mean I, i've read about nick saban hitting you know jalen hurts and and not nick saban personally but you know having in <laughs> practice having hits on hurts and Tua back in the day when they were practicing that way and i I know I'll say that and people will go, oh, yeah, well, that's Bama. And, you know, when you have five star be- behind five star behind five star. But shockingly right now, we we actually have a little bit of depth. And, yeah. and you know, now Chubb is hurt and everything. I get it. But the point is, guys get guys get hit in football. You know, and, and I just I'm old school that way. Right. But let's talk NIL. Let's talk transfer okay. portal, the things that have changed in college football. And as old school as I am, I'm a huge believer that i mean you've got to we've got to win the things that we can win and control you know and this these seem to be the new things that are changing college football so whereas 30 years ago it was we were you know at the forefront of strength and conditioning the forefront of nutrition the forefront of husker vision and using technology today it's nil and it's transfer portal you guys had a great discussion today on the radio this morning sip about nil let's Mm -hmm. start there and kind of get your your thoughts on on NIL, how that's being used. We've saw the bars or the uh, busting with the boys interviews this week, and and there is some right. money being spent here. Um, you know, where can Nebraska make its hay, and and can we really make become a differentiator in that world? Yeah, they can. I mean, they are. And what's, I mean, what the stock answer I give 
to that question or this to start the conversation is Nebraska's NIL operation. And I say this with great confidence. In fact, I've told uh, Jared Lambrick, who's the head of ABM, which is Athletes Branding and Marketing, which is Nebraska's NIL collective. I've told him what I say, and he's he's fine with it. I say Nebraska's extremely well-structured, um, well-organized, and well-heeled. I mean, Nebraska's, I would say, quietly sort of um, – probably gained an advantage and it's kind of Nebraska's style to, to keep it quiet. Certainly Jared's style. I do think in coming weeks, we'll hear more about it. I think he's ready to do that. Um, but Nebraska's in, in great shape. I mean, I, there, there's a lot of, uh, sponsors, we'll call them. Um, if you go in the ABM, ABM office, for instance, <clears throat> there's a board that has them on it. It's it's very prominent banking institutions in Nebraska, people you'd recognize uh, that are helping. And there's a, there's a lot of money involved. So um, it's, it's, I know it's kind of a strange conversation because it's been quiet. Now, Parker Gabriel did did write an extensive NIL, NIL article a few weeks ago or a couple months ago, but it's hard to um, get a lot of facts because, you know, Jared's not going to lay it all out. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's people's money. And so it's naturally sort of awkward. Yeah. But did you guys hear what, did you guys hear what Casey said? About the just the, the straight figures the, that they can be yeah, making over six figures said, and everything up. Yeah, now this is this this was um I thought it was important. I thought those guys, uh Will Compton and Luan did a good job of pulling some information out of Casey that was that was relevant and people I think they need to know. So he Casey said there's 17 or 18 football players that have vehicles, for instance, now. OK, that's I don't know that everybody knows that, but they're not driving around and they're driving around. They're, they're, you know, what you'd expect. They're big pickups, they're SUVs. Um, they're not. It's they're, they're, it's serious. Um, for instance, Casey has a place to stay free. Um, the volleyball players, I know. Well, I don't know that every single one of them, but probably close. They, they stay in luxury apartments, real nice apartments. It's a great mm -hmm. For free. I mean, it's a great, it's a great selling point. Um, I know, for instance, that that middle blocker from Penn State that uh, that John John landed, her last stop before she left Lincoln was at ABM. I mean, that, you know, and I think that that really helped. You know, um, Casey said there's about Casey Thompson said there's about seventy or eighty student athletes at Nebraska across all sports that have an, you know, that have an apartment free, a car uh, deal as part of their NIL deal. There's all different ways that you can structure these things. And I get piece, kind of piecemeal information, basically. I mean, like an, an, an example is as part of an NIL deal, a guy will be required to make it so many appearances in a month. And, you know, they're, they're lucrative. I mean, it's good money. Um, in case he said, if you're a starter at Nebraska on the football team, you can make over six figures. Now I'd say that's a bit of a stretch. Um, but I think there's a lot of them that would have that. A lot of those guys that would have that opportunity, but that's some of the stuff that Casey said. And of course he had the humble brag, which was, I thought was interesting when he said, uh, I don't go out of my way to do all this stuff. It just comes to me. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, we're, we're the so same way on the red cast. Right. Right. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Casey he, is a very, Casey's very charismatic and he has a good deal. I know where his, his apartment is. I know the links he kind of went to set it up the way he wants, wanted it. And he's a pretty, he's a little, he's, you know, he can be a little demanding. Now, so, do you I think that question. kind of money that they put out there puts any pressure on coaches to, Make sure a player like Casey Thompson starts, plays, maybe gets more chances than a than another quarterback does. I know they're not supposed to have contact that you know with the with the sponsors and all that, but 
And it's early in the whole NIL process. You know? It is. That's the thing, Boomer. I mean, it's started in July. Um, I, I don't think so. I don't, I, I really don't. And you know what, you know, we like to have like answers that cover a lot of different people, but all coaches are a little different, you know, with frost, I bet it has little to no impact. In yeah. fact, frost probably doesn't, uh, I don't want to say he doesn't know what, you know, what kind of deals his guys have, but I, he probably knows by bet he's not overly interested in it. Um, and no, I don't think Scott's the type of guy that would that would let that inf- influence him. I think it's a it could be complicated in other ways, but not in that way. So, hey, Sip, um, um, I was listening to your radio show this morning. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I enjoy enjoy uh, Jake and sip there and um thank you david it's a little short you guys should go longer than two hours you know? <laughs> two hours seems fine to me Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know jake is like the grumpiest uh you know, young, young guy millennial. i love that guy but man i mean and today he actually found a negative take on nil he was like saying like what if they're just playing for the money not to win and i'm like i think i think i think you had a good answer in the sense of like it has to be like more relative it's like i mean everybody's doing these NIL deals. So whether that's a, a big 10 opponent or an sec school or whatever, I mean, like all these players are going to get NIL deals elsewhere. So, I mean, I, I, I just think it's really interesting. Everybody's trying to tear apart the NIL thing, but it's so early to boomers point that we need to let this play out a well, little bit. And um, mm-hmm. hopefully, you know, we're going to hopefully be the experts at it. Right. Yeah, as, Dave, as Nebraska I mean, has an advantage. You know, Dave, it we, Players need to play for the love of the game, like SMU back in the early '80s. That's I mean, right. This Absolutely. is the purity of football. <laughs> Marcus Dupree football. just, just old loved school, to play the game. Wonderful. Old, <laughs> old school guys would tell you that's what football's all about. Not about this NIL stuff. No. You know, you play for the purity of it. Rob, I mean, you wanted you got to you got to okay. So to that point though, too, Dave, is that I think that you're gonna find a, find out too that it's gonna be much like professional sports, right? Because the I mean. Typically speaking here, if they're getting paid to do it, they're professionals, right? I mean, that's that's the the short of it, whether people want to say that or not. The, their performance, and, it's not performance-based, though. So it's not performance-based. You're right. It's not. But they're still getting paid to be where they're at. And if inevitably, eventually, there's probably going to be some players that maybe they're finding out that, you know, okay, I, they came somewhere because they knew they could make more money. But if they want to play further outside of college – then they better be playing pretty darn well and not be, you know, lagging in order to, yeah. to do that, especially if it's a player. Cause most of the players that are getting NIL money are players that maybe these companies see, they might have an advantage to partner with further down the road when they become professionals. Right. Mm-hmm. But I, I, here's absolutely. the question. Here's the question I had for you, Sip though. And, and this is, this is something that I, I think about and we've talked about on the Redcast is how do you think NIL is going to affect things like, Bryce McGowan's coming back next year, right? From not yeah. to switch to, but like, how much is that going to affect it? Like, maybe he says, you know what? Because like, I don't see him being anything more than like a later first round, second round pick, right? And that that's my opinion, and and I can and, and I'm allowed to that. Dave doesn't necessarily agree, but you know, it's Rob's also wrong of, all the time. Sips. So actually, I'm, I'm right. Up, I'm know. right more often than not. But oh. that being said, um a lot of those guys end up spending time in the G league because, because they're, they, if you're drafted that late in, in the basketball draft, you're being drafted by a team like the warriors. You're being drafted like by a team like the nuggets somewhere like that, because it's later in the rounds. Those are the teams that made it deepest into the playoffs. And so, you know, while, while they may, maybe they don't want to spend all their time in the G league, right. For the first couple of years that they are over in Europe, um, you know, basically ending up like a, you know, Nico, Nico Mannion, right. Who's now playing in Europe. He's on the Warriors. He was perfectly fine last year. He was putting up some pretty good numbers in, in the league, but now he's playing over in Europe because, and you know, so the it, question, Rob, so the question, well, like, no, the question is, is like, do you think that's going to affect it? Oh, it can affect. Yeah. I mean, it's again, we're in a case by case situation now with Bryce McGowan's, I don't think that his NIL package. No, I don't pretend to know exactly what it is, but I have, I've, I've have enough people I talk to that it wouldn't. I mean, what he was making. It sounds so weird to say what he was making, but his pack, the NIL package he had, 
this year wouldn't draw him back and, and maybe they could enhance it. I don't know. I don't know what they, interestingly, the basketball, the men's basketball team is the one team that doesn't work a lot with ABM. Um, huh. It, yeah, I don't wouldn't want to get into all that, but they, the, I would say this. So case by case basis. So Feldarius Payne, I know, you know, he initially, he went into the portal, Feldarius went into the portal and then he got an NIL deal and, and went, went back on the team and then for whatever reason went back in the portal, but he was drawn back in part by an NIL deal. So yeah, that's an example of where it can, it can, it can definitely have that effect. Rob's, um, Rob's question ahead. sip actually goes back to like, I think it was right when Doc Sadler was on the hot seat and I, I can't, I, one of the Hawks, I believe did a full page ad right in one of the papers yeah, yeah. And Howard made Hawks. the case that we needed to invest in yeah. Nebraska basketball. Howard Hawks' and, son did that, actually. Yeah, right, exactly. And he was making the case that like, we need to spend more money on Nebraska basketball. And so when we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago, kind of like the theory was, is like, well, I mean, you could see one of those boosters saying like, you know, boy, just to get us over the hump, to get Fred over the hump, if if you could pay Bryce an NI though, worth a million bucks, 1.5 million to keep him in Trey back for one more year. That could be a game changer for the program. Suddenly you have an all big 10 player and Bryce McGowan's back, you know? So would there ever be a moment where there's a booster that's willing to step up to that level and, and to keep someone like Bryce McGowan's here? Uh, I mean, I don't, I've never heard of anything that dramatic, um, but there are, I mean, Nebraska does have boosters that are certainly capable of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, you know, the people that are heavily involved in this. And I'm going to say the last I saw um, on that board was a dozen, a dozen very, and I'm not going to get into the entities, um, but they're known entities in Nebraska, very, very common names that you would recognize. I mentioned one of the banking institutions. Um, would, an, would an individual step up to that level? It, it's conceivable. Um, there's a lot of money involved in this. And again, I, as I said, when I started off, I, when I say well-organized, well-structured and well-healed, I mean it. I mean, it's, and, and I would say, Dave, you said something earlier that everybody has these things in place. It's not true. They, not everybody Mm -hmm. does. Um, Nebraska is ahead of the game, um, compared to a lot of places, not all places, but you heard Casey. I mean, Casey said at Texas, yeah last year that the only three football players that had NIL deals were Bijan Robinson himself and a, and a, one of their better defenders. So it was not, and, and his dad told me, um, Charles Thompson told me that he was surprised how, how, how many student athletes at Nebraska benefit compared to Texas. I would tell you that Wisconsin's not, they don't have any kind of struggle. They, they've struggled from what I've heard to just to yeah. even get any of that. No, they have, going I mean, as of a few weeks ago, they had virtually no structure in place. Mm-hmm. Um, so Nebraska, again, Nebraska's, it's just quietly done this, but it's, it is, mm-hmm. it's a formidable operation. Well, and having and open doors. Could, yeah, go ahead. Open yeah, doors having open doors located right down here too. I mean, I know they've been, they were prepping for this, you know, a year in advance at least of, the actual turn on date of, of NIL, which is what last sometime last summer, August 1st, July 1st. I, I have one last question on this and we can move on to maybe some of the, the changes that have happened over the off season. It, just kind of a fun question, I guess. Think of some former Husker coaches. How do you think they would have handled the NIL like Osborne? You know, so sip, you know, if this was Osborne, he's the head coach and, and NIL is now legal. How do we, do you see, how do you see him managing something like that? Well, I'll tell you what, the, as, I mean, I, I hate to just spew cliches all the time, but that's about what I'm limited to, but the, <laughs> the great ones adjust. And I think mm-hmm. Tom had to adjust to different things during the course of his 25 year tenure. And I think he could adjust to this the way John Cook does. I mean, I don't know if you've ever seen John Cook's comments, John Cook's, I think he's 65, you know, he's no, and, and John's old school. Okay. Mm-hmm. But he's adjusted to this world. And, and, and he does it, if you read his comments, somewhat grudgingly, okay? It's not, this is not ideal for John. It And he has said, I mean, I wrote a column about it a few weeks ago. He was on the radio show and he, 
he said it creates significant locker room challenges. Okay. Um, and, 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 you know, you can, you can only imagine he benched, you know, Lexi's son who had a huge NIL now NIL deal. Now her NIL deal was on her own. She, that wasn't an ABM deal. That was, mm-hmm. you can strike out on your own and do this if you're creative and you have the right connections. So, but John, John goes with it. Hey, it's a big part of Nebraska volleyball. Mm-hmm. I mean, when they, when I say luxury apartments, they're living in beautiful places and they, um, and I'm, I'm not saying it's limited to that. I don't know exactly what, what their deals are like, but John, as I said, that Penn state volleyball player, um, has an NIL deal and that's mm-hmm. the, the transfer. And, and I'm sure that's part of the reason she's here. It would have been kind of fun to watch Bo, I think, deal with some of these things. No, it wouldn't be fun. <laughs> That'd no. be a train wreck. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Bo's Bo. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe he. Didn't. I'd say he would keep it at arm's length. You yeah. know, I he could probably. You know what? I I was joking around. He could probably handle it. Um, I've talked to a lot of coaches about it, and most of them just what they say on the record and what they say off the record don't jibe. I, I mean, they. It's it's a it's a challenge to a lot of the guys, especially the like the 50 plus guys like Mm. myself. Nebraska takes a 12 0 lead over in Mexico state. That's good to hear. Uh, Before we move. That is good. That is good. Before we move on then to, I think some of the coaching changes, Boomer, has anything come into the, uh, through the questions so far? Uh, Yeah, we've had several. Uh, One from loyal listener, Richard Fitzwell. Uh, We've kind of addressed this. He'd asked, uh, does it with NIL, does it matter if they play as long as they get the publicity or advertising, he brings up Quinn Ewers made good NIL money and there was no way he was playing last year at Ohio state. Oh, uh, you know, that's a good question. It's so new, Richard, you know, again, it just started July 1st. Mm. Um, so it's hard to, it's, yeah. Some of that stuff's a little hard to understand right now for me. Uh, how, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you wonder about that. Could a guy's yeah. NI, NIL deal get pulled? I don't know. They sign deals. I mean, they're legitimate like contracts. So, yeah, just depends on what that how that contract reads. I mean, I would assume there's if there's some kind of like a you know behavioral issue, we'll just say you know something something sure, yeah. that doesn't look good for the brand. I'm sure that you know just like with anybody else, they could pull it, right? I mean, you know, they yeah. one of them. Well, who's they? they? I mean, is that but, is that Lambrick making a unilateral decision. No, it's, it's, it's a really imperfect. I mean, the, what, what I've been critical of is college football laying it out too early without parameters. The without NCAA enough, did without enough. Parameters. Wait, wait, are you trying the to say NCAA the NCAA did, NCAA did something that, that <laughs> they didn't think all the way through? <laughs> I, thinking, right. I'm sorry, Sip, right. but I'm going to have to disagree with you. there. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? I think there's a lot of pressure to do it though. And it just, now, here's the big thing. Here's the, like, it, you know, I've talked to Trev about this stuff at length, Trev Alberts. Um, what's what's really interesting to me is where this is probably going. I mean, there's pending litigation. You'd have to Google it. But I think where it's probably three years away where, the, where there will be, you know, it'll, it'll be more uniform because the schools will be paying the money. Um, that's, I, I don't think we're too too long from that happen, mm. too far from that happening. I'd say three or four years. Then it's gonna be, it's gonna get really strange. It's, it, I think it'll be even more strange in some ways, because there's, there's a school of thought that it could be just football that's paying players, mm. and the rest of this, the rest of the sports wouldn't. Um, that's one school of thought. But what Trev's gearing up for is to make. I mean, he's making a lot of financial decisions within the athletic department right now that are geared toward the eventuality of the school paying the players. So he, so he's, his whole line of thinking is if this comes to pass, which it could, then they better have, I don't know. I would hate to, I, I almost hate to put a number on, but I'd say in the 40 to $50 million range, ready to roll. Um, that's a lot. That's a significant amount of money. Yeah. That not everybody would have either, which creates mm-hmm. a whole nother discussion. How, how is a place like UTEP going to handle that? 
Well, the same way that they've always handled it. I mean, it, let's let's be honest. This this sort of stuff. This isn't the first time that schools have been paying players. They just haven't been quite open about it. I mean, you know, there's there's a reason why teams like Alabama and Ohio State and Michigan and you know they continue to be able to recruit so well. It's just now it's you know the books are the books are open. I guess you could you could technically sort say of now, open. So. They're sort yeah, of open. Sort of Not open, but way. but I mean you know more than they were before. I mean you know are they going to yeah. give are they going to give Reggie Bush's Heisman back? That's what I want. To know. <laughs> you know I yeah mean, the key, the key for people to remember is up until this point until as everything Trev's preparing for, until that point, none of this is going through the university. It's all outside of it. The, right. You're not getting paid from that. So NIL is what you're doing on your own time outside of that. And, and it is, a, it's a cataclysmic change from what we were doing before. I mean, to, to your point, they were taking Heisman's away from people and there was tattoo gate for things that are not even close to being illegal yeah. now. And it was a very quick shift. So uh, I'm not defending the old school guys that, that, you know, want to just stay with the, with the old, the way it was done before, but this is, this is very quick. What was, what happened before and now, now it's allowed, but. Oh, I think it's, it's been so quick that people, that I don't, I don't know how, I don't expect people to fully understand it. Yeah. Possible. But mm -hmm. I would, I'd want to add one thing. Yeah. The pain, the players thing I get, it's, it's, it's happened a lot, but I'm going to tell you something at Nebraska. It hasn't happened a lot. I, people can talk about, you know, the Irving Friars and Mike Rogers, but I've covered it a long time. And I know guys like, for instance, D'Angelo Evans, who was a, a highly recruited running back. He wasn't getting any money. I can tell you that right now. He, he I, I remember because our conversations would often be he wanted to go home to Wichita, but I knew what kind of car he drove. And sometimes he just couldn't get back because his car was terrible. He wouldn't mm -hmm. be trusted to make it. Mm -hmm. He wasn't making money. I mean, I know, I know, I knew Jamal Lord very well. He wasn't making any money. Those guys weren't making any money beyond their scholarship. I don't think Will, Will Compton talked about it the other day. He'd have 400 extra bucks after he paid his rent and utilities a month. And that was it. I mean, so I don't, I really push back on that notion that, yeah, it's been going on. Nebraska has always been paying players. No, they haven't. I mean, I think mm -hmm. there's, there's some cases where they have, but not, I don't think it's widespread. 